Hey Royce, the Euro Bandit here, and today I'm gonna do a review of my Pioneer SX1080. Now I don't normally do a review of every single audio equipment piece that I have. This one, however, is quite special and it definitely deserves a review before I'll put it on sale. This receiver has been made between 1978 and 1980. It has 120 watts per channel into 8 ohms frequency response from 5 Hz to 80 kHz which is very good the total harmonic distortion is 0.05% and it weighs around 21.3 kg it's a very beautiful piece of equipment it's certainly not as much appreciated as the 50 series because you know many classic audio enthusiasts do prefer the 50 series instead of the 80 series well I don't know why because they both look great but I would probably prefer the 50 series as well and you know why because I'm not a huge fan of the black indicators over here they could have been white then it would have been even way nicer but of course it's an introduction to the 1980s and of course it's a monster receiver because it has above 100 watts if a 70s receiver has at least 100 watts well that's a monster receiver what the 50 series doesn't have compared to the 80 series is these beautiful power indicators but it's all right i've had once a pioneer sx 450 it wasn't anything special it was just a entry level model with 15 watts per shell but I loved that thing but I sold it because it wasn't anything special here's the power switch and here's the bass control and this is the turnover 200 to 400 hertz and the bass level a switch for the tones even if the bass and treble are set to a certain level but once you flip this tone switch and you turn the tone off it doesn't matter if you change the bass and treble it will stay flat no matter what so you definitely want to have the tone turn on and obviously here's the treble control and here's the turnover for it 2.5 hertz to 5 kilohertz this is the phone jack speaker selector A to B which means that you can hook up two pairs of speakers so this beautiful receiver filter 15 hertz or 6 kilohertz i don't use these this is for the radio part multipad compared to the morans receivers this multipad thing actually stays on which is very practical to have when you set up your antenna i don't know what this is but if any of you know what this is let me know in the comments below and obviously the muting on and off here's the function selector FM, AM, AUX Phono 1 or Phono 2 slash microphone here's the microphone input down here we have the tape monitor 1, 2 or you can duplicate them both it's very good if you copy from a cassette to another it's very useful in that case or from a reel to reel to a cassette or vice versa here's the mode stereo or mono loudness obviously turn on here's the balance control and here's a bigger knob which is the volume knob you cannot confuse that on many receivers it, the volume knob is actually the same size as the bass and treble and it might confuse you sometimes but this one no way it's bigger and looks much better and this is a very useful feature you flip this thing and it's muting the power so minus 20 decibels which is very useful that's obviously when you don't want to play music loudly and you just want to hear it for yourself in the night or whatever if you're gonna turn the volume a tiny bit it will be way too loud so therefore having this function is very useful here's the tuning knob this is how the dial looks like it's beautiful as you can see and this indicates which input is selected and this is for a tuning signal and the other dial is so make sure that you have the radio station tuned in correctly if it's in the middle it's certainly tuned in correctly and now let's turn it on this receiver is a US import so it's been imported from the USA 
Since this thing is from the US, it's obviously a 110 volts model. And in order for it to function in Europe, you have to have a voltage converter, such as this piece of shit. Turn this one on, as you can see. And now I can finally turn the receiver on. And it's very nicely illuminated. Let me show you a picture of how it actually looks like in the dark. The radio itself is very good. I can actually receive FM stations that are broadcasted 30 kilometers away from here. Of course I can't receive all of them if I don't have an antenna hooked up to it, but quite a few of them. It's unbelievable. So the radio, you can't beat it. It has wooden cabinet. It's very beautiful. Nice metal vent over here as you can see. It's very well built. Pure Japanese quality of the 70s, which is meant to outlive the human life. And this is how the backside looks like, as you can see. It has some um, AC outlets, American standard, 120 volts, 60 hertz. And here's the speaker input. And this thing can also be either a preamp or a power amp. And of course, it's made in Japan. And the crappy converter that I have can do maximum 500 watts and it's bullshit, this thing isn't 350 watts. Here in Europe we actually calculate the maximum power it uses, so it should be at least 1000 watts. It does have 350 watts, probably at idle. If I would keep this receiver I would definitely have to invest in a better voltage converter. I would buy one that's at least 2000 watts or even 3000 watts because why not they are pretty cheap on eBay here's the antenna here's where you connect the antennas as you can see for the FM AM ground here are the inputs tape 1 tape 2 aux phono 1 and phono 2 now I had this thing for quite a few months now but I didn't know what to do with it, whether I would keep it or not, but I decided not to keep it and I'm gonna tell you why I'm not gonna keep it. There's actually two reasons and number one reason is that I want another Master Pioneer receiver which is the 50 series and I actually want the SX1250 and the SX1250 is the wet dream of many true audio enthusiasts and I'm one of them and I really want that thing and I wanted that thing since I've had the SX450 back in 2012 of course I wasn't around when these beautiful things were new <laughs> wish I was though because I love the 70s this thing in Sweden now in 2015 is worth between 650 and 700 euros if it's the American model if it's the European model with 220 volts it should be worth more second reason why I want to sell this thing is that because of the bass now tell you what I love the sound of it nothing that's modern beats it definitely that's a certain thing but it lacks a bit of bass. Now even though I have the bass turned on to the maximum and the loudness on obviously, it still lacks a bit of bass. Now there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. They should be this way because I've heard this thing from many other classic pioneer owners and even the bigger models are the same so they are not the best when it comes to bass. So it does have it, it does have the bass, it does have quite a bit of it, but it's not that kind of bass that actually punches you in the chest, if you know what I mean. You can feel it more when you turn it on, but when you have it at lower volumes, you will still feel it, but not the whole lot. And I've had quite a few receivers, and I even had the Akai AA1050, and that thing had quite good bass. Of course you can't compare the Akai AA1050 to this model. Not even the 
AA1175, which I currently own. If you would do a comparison between a Pioneer SX1080 like this one, you could compare it with an Akai AA1200, which is their top of the line model. Overall, it's a great receiver. The only thing I don't like about it is the lack of bass. The bass is there, but it's a bit muddy, if you know what I mean. Now, I will play some music for you, just so you'll get an idea of how the receiver will sound like, but it's not like in real life. It's alright, I could live with this thing, but I know that there are other alternatives, so therefore I won't keep it. And for some reason this stereo light stays on, no matter what, FM, AM as you can see. And I don't think it should stay that way either, because here's the mode, mono, so stereo, if I select mono, the light still stays on. And I've tried the mono mode and it doesn't do anything, so there's a problem. I think that someone has been inside there and they didn't really know what they were really doing, right? Or they've done a mistake. This was a review of my 1978 to 1980 Pioneer SX1080 Stereo Monster receiver. Hope you liked this video, if you did, why not? Thumbs up, comment, share, check out my other videos and why not subscribe? And I'll see you next time. Sonara!